Did you know Apple made a video game console? Before we dive into the hardware, let's go back to around 1994 when Apple computers accounted for about 7% of the home computer market and Ace of Base had three top 10 singles. Boy, that was actually kind of a weird time for music. The IBM compatible PC market was exploding. Apple's new CEO, Michael Spindler, wanted a return on the significant amount of money that was being spent on research and development. In an attempt to improve rapidly diminishing market share, Spindler started the Clone Initiative in 1995, meaning third-party manufacturers could license the Apple ROM and build a Macintosh-compatible clone. Apple was also experimenting with new devices such as the Newton, which was the brunt of many jokes. From the clone initiative came the idea to create a video game console built around Apple's relatively new PowerPC technology. The video game market seemed rife with potential, but with industry giants like Nintendo and Sega dominating sales, Apple knew they had to get it right. Multimedia capable computers were extremely popular in the mid-1990s, and the internet was rapidly becoming a household necessity. Apple wanted their new console to not only be able to run games, but also serve as a multimedia appliance that would be able to connect to the internet. They would then license this technology to third-party developers, utilizing Spindler's clone initiative. Bandai, a very successful Japanese toy maker, was interested in licensing Apple's new product. The Bandai Pippin was born. In this agreement, Bandai would be responsible for manufacturing and marketing the Pippin while Apple would retain rights to license the technology to other companies and absorb R&D costs. In March 28, 1995, the Bandai Pippin was officially released in Japan with a North American launch that September. The Pippin launched for 599 US dollars. Wait a minute, where have I heard that before? Real change and the consumers are ready. PlayStation 3 will retail for 599 US dollars. <laughs> now, adjusting for inflation, that's almost $1,000 today. Considering the PlayStation launched the same year for $299, it wasn't looking good for Apple. So, what did you get with your new purchase? Let's take a look. I have the Japanese console here. Aside from the console, you get the Apple-designed Applejack controller, a modem adapter, manuals and promotional material, CDs containing advertisements for upcoming software and dial-up connectivity, and the necessary cables. On the back, you had a printer and modem ports, composite video and S-video, as well as scan-doubled VGA output. You could also select NTSC or PAL modes on the back of the console. Pretty cool. Honestly, the hardware is really nice. I'll go as far as to say that the Pippin has the best build quality of any console that I've ever seen. The hardware didn't deviate too far from Apple's existing Power Macintosh technology. The console is powered by a Motorola PowerPC 603 running at 66 megahertz has six megabytes of shared memory, which is expandable via a proprietary expansion bay and uses a 4x SCSI CD-ROM drive as its storage device. There were no memory cards, but 128K of NVRAM was available for saving settings or high score. The names of those involved with the Pippin project can be seen inside of the case. Since it shared the same platform as Apple's existing computers, porting games to the Pippin was easy. In fact, you can briefly see the Pippin loading a version of Mac OS before it starts this particular game. Software companies were slow to warm up to the new console. The exorbitant price tag and stagnant sales deterred developers, despite the ease of porting existing games over from the Macintosh. Now, for the most part, the games really suck, and the games that shouldn't suck are hampered by awful controls. Racing Days Racing Days and Marathon are often regarded as the system's best titles. The twitchy controls make them almost unplayable, especially the racing game.
The controller is pretty comfortable, but it really takes some getting used to, especially this uh, trackball and mouse buttons. Perimeter secured. Really? You humans are such fools. The machine empire is here and it is here forever. <laughs> In a short time we will have the greatest army ever assembled and then the human race will be a thing of the past. But just in case you Power Rangers were getting any ideas of trying to stop me... I've decided to relieve you of your Zeo Crystals. Estimates suggest approximately 42,000 Pippins being sold worldwide before the console was discontinued in 1997. The Pippin was arguably Apple and Bandai's biggest commercial failure. Now, while Pippins are extremely rare to find in the wild, they're actually relatively easy to find, and that's just because there's no demand for them. You can actually go on eBay and buy a sealed Japanese Pippin. In fact, it's actually easier to find a sealed Japanese Pippin than it is a used one. Now, North American Pippins, which are actually black, are really hard to find. Uh, it's rumored that fewer than 12,000 Pippins were sold in North America. Now, would I recommend buying a Pippin? Absolutely not, unless you're afflicted with some type of illness that says that you have to collect really weird consoles 